I'm super excited to bring you this video today. It's been three years in the making. Next to me here, this is an apple variety that I know you've never had before. I know that because I planted this one from seed only three years ago. This is the Prigioni apple. Yep, my own variety. And you could have your own variety too. So today, I'm gonna show you how to plant your own apple tree from seed. Let's go. First thing you're gonna need is an apple, and I suggest a ripe one and an organic one. Let's cut it open and get the seeds. We've got some seeds right here. We want to be really careful not to damage these as best we can. To take your knife and just pop them out a little. Being real gentle. It's a pretty stiff apple. It's a good one. And a couple more seeds here. Just cut it like I would eat it. Just being careful not to damage the seed. Then just break it open like that. And you, the seed right off the bat looks like it's not finished to me, but I'll stick it in the ground anyways. It just looks like it hasn't finished ripening. One like this one looks a lot nicer by the color and everything. But I'll cut open the other half now. And then after we take all these seeds out, we'll let them air dry for two to three days. You don't want them in a damp place because you don't want any mold. And you don't also don't want them in a, in a really sunny place. Just a, just a warm, dry place for a few days to let the seeds all dry out. After you've collected your seeds and let them dry, here I've got some apple seeds and some pear seeds that I've saved over the years. There's a few different methods of getting them started. The first one I'm gonna go over is the best and the easiest. That's direct seeding it, doing it just like nature. And one important thing about that is you're gonna to wanna to put them in the ground in the fall. So I'm gonna put these seeds down and get the area ready to put them in the ground because it's fall here now. And the reason you wanna put them in the fall is because apple seeds need to go through a dormancy period where the temperatures drop. That's why when we're, I'm gonna show you the method later, you're gonna to have to put them in the refrigerator for a little while just to trick the seeds into basically doing the same thing that's gonna happen naturally. So here, I'm gonna dig back the wood chips till I get to the dirt, because we wanna plant in the dirt, just like any other seed. And this dormancy period is important for the seed to finish ripening, or basically, for the embryo to finish reaching maturity. Now that I'm down to the soil level, and you can see how beautiful the soil is from the no-till method using wood chips, look how nice and beautiful that is. Got worms just everywhere in here. So we're gonna dig a little furrow in there, to get our seeds ready to be planted. Now we're gonna grab the apple seeds. And this general rule of thumb for how deep you plant the seeds, the bigger the seed, the deeper you plant it. The smaller the seed, you don't plant it as deep. So if you ever planted a bean seed, we wanna plant these not as deep as a bean seed, but deeper than something you'd plant like a carrot. Whether it's a quarter inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, isn't a huge deal. Just make sure you got the seeds all covered with some good dirt and make sure they're going to be able to stay moist. So once that's all covered, make sure it's all good. I'll just leave that, cover it with a very thin layer of mulch. We don't want to cover the wood chips back over it, although it won't allow the seed to come up. Now that you have them all planted, you can relax all winter. When you come back in the spring, you should see some of them starting to pop up. And not everyone's going to pop up. That's why I suggest overplanting a lot of seeds. If you think you want three apple trees, plant 15 to 20 seeds. This way, if 15 come up or 20 come up, you can pick the best three. You don't wanna just put three in the ground and none of them end up coming up. And that's just one method and the easiest method of starting them. But let me show you a few other methods if you can't direct seed. For those of you who know about apples or have done some research, then you know it's not common for someone to plant an apple tree from seed. Rather, it's really common to buy a grafted apple tree. And that's what I suggest doing if you have a small space. And the main reason for that is when you plant an apple from seed, that apple's not gonna grow true to type. What I mean by that is if you have a gala apple and you save the seeds from it, then plant them and the tree fruits, you're not just gonna get a gala apple. It's not gonna be the same one from the seeds you planted because there's just so much genetic diversity within the apple. And also, it could have been pollinated by just a different tree, so you're gonna have two different parents. So the likelihood that you're gonna get the same gala apple from the seed you planted is basically slim to absolutely zero. If you're gonna be starting your seeds indoors, there's a number of ways to do it. One way is to take a container like this, or you could take a plastic bag. And after your seeds are all dried, what you want to do is take some paper towels. And I have some napkins here, some good quality napkins that are basically the same as a paper towel. So I'll lay that in the bottom. Spray the paper towel just to dampen it. You don't want it wet, just moist. And I'll take all these seeds and put them in. And I'll be mimicking what I had previously mentioned about the dormancy period by putting this into the fridge. And I'm going to take the other paper towel, or this is, again, a good quality napkin. It's basically a paper towel. I'm gonna to spray it to dampen it. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna soak it, you just wanna dampen this paper towel because the seeds need to be wet. 
and after you put it in the fridge, the ideal temperature is around 40 degrees. And after you put it in the fridge, it's gonna take from two to three weeks all the way up to a couple months in order for the seeds to sprout because all seeds are a little different. That's a really big window for germination. So you're gonna wanna come through and just every couple days or so, make sure that the paper towel in here stays damp enough and make sure it's not too wet and there's no mold forming or anything. If you did it right, then there shouldn't be. After you see some little tap roots sprouted, you can either plant those into a pot or plant those directly into the ground as long as it's spring. If your seeds in the fridge haven't sprouted in about 60 or 70 days, you can still plant them out in the spring. They may just need a little warm weather in order to sprout. I know with this previous method, there's a big window of when they can sprout. And I think I found a little way around this that I've done in the past. So I'll take the seeds like I previously did and I'll put them in here, but I won't really dampen the paper towel as much as I did. Just a tiny, tiny little bit of wetness, not much at all, not enough for the seed to sprout. And then I'll put it in the fridge for about 60 to 70 days. This way I know it's not gonna sprout because it doesn't have enough water, but I'm still kind of mimicking that winter dormancy period. Then when spring comes a couple weeks before, you could either wet that paper towel to start getting it open and sprouted, or you can just wait and plant that in the spring. If you see germinated and sprouted and you can't plant it outdoors right now, or you just don't have the space, you can put it in a pot. And here's one that I've transplanted out. And apple trees really typically don't like being transplanted and they don't like really being hardened off. They'd rather really be started in the spot that they're gonna be if you're gonna grow from seed. One of the main reasons for that and one of the great reasons for growing an apple tree from seed is you could have a really strong taproot if you plant it directly. You'll never disturb that taproot and that'll be really healthy and a huge help for the tree. This apple tree right here, I grew inside in a pot and transplanted out and it's doing all right. But as opposed to the one that I started from seed, it's a lot smaller and some of the reason could be because I may have damaged the taproot in transplanting or just the taproot never really had the opportunity to shoot straight down because the pot could have caused it to kind of swirl in a sense and get tangled with some of the other roots. But I'm not trying to discourage you if you have to grow in a pot and you just don't have the space because this thing is still doing well and I hope to get some fruit out of it soon. I'm not sure exactly why I got fruit on this tree so young in only three years, but one of the things I do to it that could be a possible reason is I really prune this thing heavy and that could have possibly stressed the tree out in a sense a little bit and caused it to fruit at a young age. That's just a possibility. And another thing to note is all the fruit on apple trees and pear trees and those, it's always gonna be in the lateral branches more, not on the branches growing straight up. So I get rid of all those straight up branches when it was younger and encourage more of these laterals where you can see the fruit is actually on. And something I do to save space with this tree is in the spring, once it starts setting its flowers, and I know where the flowers are, where they're all gonna be, I come through and I just cut out anything that I know isn't gonna be a flower, isn't gonna have fruit, because I don't want this tree to waste any space in my garden. It's just here to set fruit for me. So right after it sets fruit, I cut out a lot of those sucker branches and everything, and then I just continue to keep cutting those branches down as much as I need to keep this tree small. All right, I'm gonna try one of the Prigioni apples now. They're not the most perfect looking apples, and they're a little small, but they're sweet. And they're not astringent, like some wild apples can get. All right, let me bite into it. Like I said, so sweet. Got a tiny bit of tartness, but absolutely no astringency. And it's not a sour apple. Reminds me a lot of like a wine sap. Really great flavor and perfectly ripe. I love them as just little snacks. And Something you could definitely make jelly or jam with, but I really just enjoy them as they are like this. This Prigioni apple right here, I put in the ground only four years ago, and it only took three years to fruit. Here's a clip from 2013, in the spring when it was just coming up as a seedling. And you can see this is that same section right there. There's two seedlings, there was three of them. Now there's, there's one, this is an uh, apple tree as well. A little smaller, going a lot slower than this one in the back here. And there used to be another one back here that, that didn't make it though. And then I have a number of other ones all throughout the garden. Right next to this almond tree right here, you can see in front, there's an apple tree. Doing well, growing real tall, I had a good year. So I'll come and cut this, keep it smaller. And there's another one also by this cherry tree right there. Let me zoom forward. There we go. Yeah, look at it, doing real well also. No fruit on this one, but I'm expecting fruit soon. Here's the transplanted one and I'm sure there's more. On the other hand, if you plant a grafted apple tree of say a Granny Smith apple, when it fruits, it's gonna be the same Granny Smith apple that you would buy in the store. 
And that's because in its simplest form, grafting is basically cloning. So that same Granny Smith apple that we got years and years ago, it's the same one we're still eating today. What they do when grafting is just take a tree and we'll go back to that Granny Smith again of say it's a Granny Smith apple. And they'll take one of those branches, they'll cut that and they call that scion wood. And they'll take that scion wood and they'll graft it onto a rootstock. There's a number of reasons they graft it onto a rootstock. One of them is for size. If you have a small garden and you don't have a lot of space, then you could buy a tree that's on a dwarf rootstock, which means the roots will stay small. And as a result of the roots staying small, the top of the tree will also stay small and it won't get above say 10 to 12 feet on a dwarf rootstock. And they also have semi dwarf rootstocks. And then there's the standard size, which a regular apple tree would be. If you planted it from seed, it would get up to about 30 feet. So getting a dwarf tree would really save the space in a small area. Another reason they graft onto a dwarf rootstock is because it actually fruits in a shorter period of time. So on a dwarf rootstock, they'll say that you can get fruit in about two to three years, although I think it's around more about four. And a semi dwarf rootstock, they say about four to five years. And then on a standard tree, if you wanted to plant an apple from seed, like I did, they say it takes about eight to 10 years, although I found that not to be true. In the future, I'm gonna go more into rootstocks and grafting when I do some grafting in here, because I've got some good ideas and I'm gonna be grafting my Prigioni apple onto some of my other apple trees. I wanted to lay out the main reasons why they say not to. It can get up to 30 feet. It could possibly take up to 10 years to get fruit. You never know what you're gonna get. But those things, that doesn't mean anything to me. Just the joy, the excitement, the opportunity to have no clue what you're gonna get. I don't care, I would've waited 10 years to see what I could get. The Prigioni apple, it's a delicious apple. I love it and I'm so happy I have it. And I just wanna encourage you guys, you could be growing your own apple. It didn't even take what they said the length of time. So don't let those numbers, don't let that stuff fool you. If you have the space, if you have the patience, you gotta take the chance. How do you guys think we got any of the apples we have now? Someone took a chance. The Granny Smith apple I was talking about before, Maria Ann Smith planted that apple. She took the chance. Now she has her own apple. That's what I wanna have in the future. I wanna be planting more apple seeds, more trees, just the opportunity. I mean, to me, that's just so great. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm so happy I got to bring this video to you to share with you the Prigioni apple. If you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends. I wanna get this video to a million views. Let's get a million apple seeds planted. And when you plant the trees, share them with me on Facebook. I wanna see them growing up. Let's get some new delicious varieties. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.